everyone, Dylan here from Diamond Spotlight. Today I wanna to talk about three very popular engagement ring settings and show you guys some videos of some different observations about the three, talk about the pros and cons of each, and then talk about diamond pairings and what specifically looks good with those settings. So the three settings that we're talking about are a traditional solitaire setting. This is a traditional solitaire setting with a white gold band, very simplistic. This is the Cinderella ring that you see in the movies, right? This is the traditional setting that is so well known. And then we move up to something that's a little bit more fancy, a little bit more flashy. That is the solitaire setting with a pave band, a very, very nice look. And then we move up to something like the Falling Edge Halo. This is a Halo style engagement ring with the Pave band, a more premium setting that's gonna be more expensive. And as you can see, it has a larger profile. So we're gonna compare these three and let's talk about the differences and why you may wanna choose one or the other, depending on what you like. Now, all the video shots that you're seeing in this video are from rings that I have reviewed on my channel. And all of these rings and settings come from James Allen. So if you wanna reference the exact setting that you're seeing in this video, I will have all three of them down in the video description. I'll have links to James Allen where you can look at this exact setting. And if you wanna build a ring using the setting that you're seeing in this video, I will have a link to it down below. Up first, I wanna take a look at the solitaire setting with the traditional white gold band. This is a ring that is all about the diamond. And if you take a look at this video here, when you have a nice sparkly diamond that shows really, really well, there is just nothing like a simplistic solitaire setting to showcase that diamond. It really just brings that diamond into focus with no distractions. And it, it in my opinion, is just unparalleled. It looks absolutely fantastic. So with a solitaire setting like this, you have a couple options, four prong or six prong. Typically, the four prong is a little bit bigger with the prongs uh, to make them more secure. Six prongs, usually a little bit smaller. Um, it depends on what you like. Most people, I think, spring for the six prong. Uh, the four prong does tend to be a little bit cheaper, so it's really up to you what you like. I think both look fantastic. But like I said, it's all about the diamond. Now, in terms of size, if you're gonna go with a setting like this, I think you really need to be one carat or larger because with all the focus being on the diamond, if the diamond is less than one carat, it can tend to look a little bit small. So if you're gonna go with something less than a carat, if the style, if you like the style, you'd probably be better off with something like a halo design to increase the overall profile of the diamond to make it look a little bit bigger. But if you're at one carat or higher, a solitaire diamond can look absolutely fantastic. Another great thing about this setting is that because it's so simplistic and it just focuses on the diamond, when you go to buy a wedding band, pretty much any wedding band will pair nicely with this engagement ring. So you can really go fancy and get something like a pave twisty rope design like you see on the screen here, and it will pair very nicely. This is pretty much a blank canvas for your wedding band. You can get whatever you like. Another great thing is that this setting is very, very easy on the budget. Usually you can find a solitaire setting like this in the three to $500 range which leaves you a lot of money left over for your diamond, which is great because this is a very diamond focused setting. So save money on the setting, put all that money that's left in your budget into the diamond and you get a fantastic looking ring. So the next setting I wanna talk about is that solitaire setting with a pave band. Now, if the white gold band is just a little too simple for you and you want something a little bit more sparkly, a little bit more bold, if you add just a pave band to a solitaire setting, and then possibly couple that with a custom basket. That can really add a lot of style and detail to your ring, make it look very custom. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. This is actually like a $7,300 ring. This was built custom in James Allen's ring studio. And this is a 2.16 carat lab diamond. And I will have a link to the customization options that I use to create this exact setting. Um, in the link in their ring studio. So you can build this as well through their, what they call the ring studio, which is a custom editor. But what you can see here, we have the pave band and then we have the scalloped six prong basket there for the diamond. And that design is a little bit more custom, but it's also a little bit more expensive. So to get that pave band and to get that scallop six prong around the diamond, you're talking about an extra 900 to a thousand dollars. So you're gonna have to take some of that budget out of the diamond to put it into the setting. So depending on what your budget is and what the target size of the diamond you're looking for, you can easily upgrade to something like this, get a little bit more bold with the design and not dip too much into your budget, especially if you're going with the lab diamond. 
Um, like I said, this is just shy of $8,000. So you can get a very, very nice looking ring if you're going the lab diamond route, but that's up to you whether you wanna go natural or lab. There's no right answer there. That's really up to the buyer and the person getting the ring of what they enjoy, whether it's just the overall look of the diamond or if they really care about the origin of the diamond of it coming, uh, being a natural earth diamond. So that's up to you, but there's a lot of wiggle room there if you do go the lab route. You can get a very nice looking ring uh, with a large diamond and get those extra bold little additions like the pave band and the scallop six prong basket and still be under ten thousand dollars so a lot of options there now the next thing i want to look at is a double falling edge halo engagement ring with a pave band this is a very very bold ring with a ton of sparkle you can see all little diamonds there in the pave band and then we have two rows of diamonds going around the center stone we start one up at the top and then it falls down to the next row on the bottom. Now, when I reviewed this setting, I really enjoyed how well executed it was. You see very little hardware between all the smaller diamonds. Now, this is a very expensive setting. It's about $2,000. So you're gonna be spending a large portion of your budget on the setting itself, but it does go quite a far ways. Now, the only downside to this setting is it looks amazing. The profile of the diamond is huge, but the only downside is that a lot of your center stone is covered up. You're only seeing the top of your center stone, so you don't really get to see the cut of the diamond, and it doesn't, doesn't have that kind of traditional diamond look where the whole diamond is exposed. However, this can work in your favor if your center stone is slightly smaller. So if you're going with, say, a 0.9 or 0.8 carat, but then you couple that with the double falling edge halo, the overall profile of that diamond is going to be much, much larger, and it's going to look like a much larger ring from a distance. And because this setting is executed so well, even when that ring is pulled up close, all those little diamonds are still going to fit in very nicely around the center stone and still look fantastic. I have seen some halo settings out there that I'm definitely not a fan of, just simply because, uh, because they don't hide the hardware that's holding the small diamonds as well. But this setting, like I said, very well executed. It hides that hardware and it's just aesthetically very pleasing. So if you're going with a slightly smaller stone or even if you're going with the one carat or a 1.5 carat, but you want it to look like a two, two and a half, a halo, a double falling edge halo is a fantastic option. And there's gonna be tons of sparkle on this ring with that pave band all the way around. Now, something to keep in mind, you do have to pair a wedding band with this engagement ring. So Think about what band you want. I would say it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get the perfect pairing here because it's gonna be a little bit more complicated with the engagement ring, so the wedding band has to fit nicely with that engagement ring. Here you can see that same twisty ropes wedding band with the pave, a lot of little diamonds here, very sparkly. So if that's the route that you wanna go, it looks fantastic. So guys, that wraps up this video. I just wanna talk about some of the pros and cons of what I think about these different settings. They all look fantastic. I mean, you can see on the screen here, these are some amazing looking engagement rings. It's really all about what you like. So I hope this video helped highlight sort of the pros and cons and just a few things to think about before you pull the trigger on buying that specific setting. And I just hope I gave you some good visuals as well so you could see the different rings in action out in the wild. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you wanna see more info on all of these rings, I have a ton of other videos on my channel with unboxings and all different types of shots um, from James Allen. So be sure to check out those videos on my channel. And until next time, good luck on your engagement ring shopping. We'll see you in the next video.